Welcome back to our channel ladies and gentlemen. The action by comedian Eric Omondi where he led a group of youths who were protesting the high cost of living and they stormed parliament buildings in a bid to seek the attention of the national speaker Honorable Moses Wetangula has elicited a lot of reactions from several leaders in the country. Ledamo Lekina, who is the senator of Narok, had this to say. Ledamo said, welcome aboard Eric Omondi. More people will join our movement of change. The cost of living is too high. The former Chief Justice, Willie Mutunga, was saying that mass action has begun, uprising is on the horizon great political opportunity for an alternative political leadership in Kenya that is devoid of political viruses of both Azimio and the Kenya Kwanzaa. If you look at the two reactions, they point to one thing. Both Ledema Lekina and the former Chief Justice uh, Mutunga agree that the high cost or the, the, the cost of living is very high and that it will prompt somebody to react and the reaction will be a revolution. But one person who reacted in a manner that to me is very shameful is the former nominated MP, Madam Millicent Omanga. Omanga took to her Twitter page and said that it is simply clout chasing that some of our content creators are overdoing content creation for the sake of gushing praise. According to Honorable Millicent Omanga, Eric Omondi was leading a group of people to protest and according to her, under the guise of protesting against the high cost of living only to gain praises, only for clout chasing. And I read this tweet and I thought, this is the height of ignorance, if you ask me, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Honorable Millicent Omanga is a leader in this country. She is a nominated member of parliament who is supposed to champion for the needs of her people. She contested to be the Nairobi women representative. And I'm wondering if this is the kind of a leader that the UDA gave us, or the UDA wanted to give us in Nairobi. Someone who is who has detached herself from the reality on the ground. Even in Nairobi, where she wanted to represent. How dare she says that Eric Komondi is only a cloud chaser? Because according to Millicent Tomanga, and of course I want to I tend to believe that she is voicing the opinion of the whole Kenya Kwanzaa team. She does not think that the cost of living is high. Because when Eric led those youths, they had placards that were talking about maize flower, the sky has rocketed, the, the, the cost of school fees, the cost of electricity, because they require unga Jew, school fee Jew. They are protesting something that if you ask if you ask any Kenyan they will tell you that the cost of living has skyrocketed beyond the reach of the common man and Millicent Omanga has tainted has stayed herself and I don't know what she will do when she comes back in 2027 that she wants to contest in Nairobi because it seems she feels that everyone is as rich as she is I've got a feeling that the hustler narrative was just a campaign fallacy because the Kenya Kwanzaa team had coiled itself as a team that understands the pain that Kenyans are going through. Back then while campaigning, they said that they really understand our pain and that the only people who are the cause of all the pain and that did not understand what Kenyans were going through were Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Mulodinga. And back then they said that it is because Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Mulodinga come from 
rich families, they have never tasted the pangs of hunger. Now that the Kenya Kwanzaa team is in office, look at what they are doing. Let me remind Millicent Tomango of one thing. Eric Omondi is fairly rich. He can afford three meals in a day. He can take his family to school, good schools. He is not poor. But he is doing this for the sake of many Kenyans. He represents many Kenyans who are now suffering from the pangs of hunger, drought, because you could see our cattle are dying because there is no water. So Millicent must understand that Eric Omondi is doing this on behalf of many Kenyans. I want also to remind Millicent Tomanga that Eric Omondi has won very many awards, including the overall African Comedian of the Year in 2019. And so Eric Omondi cannot be a cloud chaser by going in front of the police to harass him to sleep in, 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 in a cell. I don't think that is true. The whole of this Kenya Kwanzaa team is a bunch of leaders who do not understand the pain of the common Mwanaichi. They pretend that they are the real hustlers. They pretend that they understand what we are going through. But in real sense, they don't understand. Milson Tomanga and the Kenya Kwanza team also believe that whatever is happening in the country can lead to nothing. They tend to trivialize everything that is happening. I remember when Raila Muludinga came up with, this, uh, with his uh, intention to organize rallies to talk to their supporters, reminding them of the high cost of living and what Raila had promised to the nation. I saw the Kenya Kwanza team led by the president and the deputy president going to the churches and trivializing and saying that they will yield nothing. But after realizing that the, the, the rallies are thronged by Kenyans who are willing to hear from Raila Murudinga, that is when their eyes are opening and they realize that it's true Kenyans are very serious about this thing. And Millicent believes that just because they have the police, nothing can happen to them. And it, it, it behoves one to question, does she walk around? Does she mingle with the ordinary people, the ordinary Nairobians whom she wanted to lead? I don't think she does because if she did, she would not be speaking the way she's speaking. Very soon, the government will have three people to deal with. Number one is the team that is following Azimio. Those who believe that Raila will help them liberate this country. And those are Azimio supporters. Because they are suffering. Unemployment, lack of food, lack of school fees. You know, everything has just gone too high. And then there is another group that do not subscribe to Raila ideologies, but they are also suffering. They are hungry, they are unemployed, they can't take their children to school, they cannot afford three meals a day. These people will find solace in the Eric Omondi camp, because you'll realize that maybe they voted for Kenya Kwanzaa, and so they don't want to associate with Raila. So they will associate with Eric Omondi. We have the university students who are very lethal when they join these rallies because them too are not left out. Already they, there are plans to increase school fees in the universities and they have already started protesting. So these people will have a bottom line that they have a reason why they are, why they are angry with the government. And so they will put aside all their differences. In fact, in the next few months, if Raila shall continue with the protests and Eric Omondi with his, and then the university student will join in, you will realize that they will have a common goal, that all of them are suffering from the high cost of living and they will join together. At least today, no one could associate Eric Omondi with the, any party because he represents just the youths who are suffering. He represents just those who 
do not have any alternative. They are looking up to this government that is in office. And so, ladies and gentlemen, someone should not delude the Kenya Kwanzaa team that because they have the police, they will harass Kenyans all the time. I can assure you that when it erupts, even the police will be overwhelmed. And our military and the police are also Kenyans. We never employed them from Uganda or Ethiopia. They are our brothers and sisters, and they know what is happening. It will reach a point when they will be tired. It has happened in other nations. There are nations where the commander-in-chief has charged them against a very marauding crowd, asking for, for their rights. And they have always stood and said, no, 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 we cannot beat these people because of one person. We cannot kill the masses who are marching, for example, to state house because of one president. And those are the situation where you, you realize that the police or the military will unite and they take over. They say that now maybe Raila Odinga and William Ruto stay out. We have taken over. I was really pained by the sentiments by Millicent Tomanga because I know she represents many Kenya Kwanzaa adherents who believe that uh, going to the street or is simply an action to disrupt William Ruto's government. You see, William Ruto is disrupting his government on his own. You cannot run a government when you had promised people that you will bring the cost of living down, when you had blamed some people, and then when those people are not around, you can no longer implement what you told them. And so he is, you know, his own enemy. The Kenya Kwanzaa team is their own enemy. Because Kenyans can no longer swallow any more lies. You saw how Nya Stadium was empty when William Ruto called for prayers. And they have to use buses to ferry people there and give them some tokens. It tells you that people are very tired. And William Ruto must blame the agreement that they signed with the international community that led to the abandoning of all the subsidies on fuel, subsidies on school fees, subsidies on, on electricity, and all this. And he must blame even himself for trying to abandon everything that was initiated by his predecessor, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. Because Uhuru knew very well that we had just come from the, the, the marauding corona pandemic and uh, he decided to bring in some measures to cushion from the pain that Kenyans were suffering from. If William Ruto is not careful, ladies and gentlemen, he is going to be a one-term president. It might not be a reality now. And even when I say this, some people may think that I'm against the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. But people are very tired. People are very hungry. And they can now see for themselves. It was our president who told us that we have a shortage of fools in Kenya today. They are able to see that right now, Uhuru Kenyatta is not the president. In fact, right now, Uhuru is in Nigeria leading a group of uh, Africa, the, the African Union, Union observers to oversee what is, how the elections are going to be conducted in Nigeria. Raila Moludinga is not in power because they had said that it was the advice of Raila Moludinga to, to the former president, Uhuru Kenyatta, that led to the skyrocketing cost of living. Kenyans are watching and they are very tired. They are holding into some very slim rope because they are, still be, they are still being given some hopes that we are praying for rains. Life is totally unbearable. In some quarters, families are committing suicide because they are disparate, they have nowhere to go. The Honorable William Ruto is doing is to call some Azimio members of parliament to make them in state house and give them some token. It does not help. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a feeling that if there is any other Kenya Kwanzaa leader who would want to think like Honorable Millicent Tomanga, then they, they would better change their attitude. Because with this kind of attitude, they will not change this country. If you have a whole lot of people suffering, youths who are unemployed, people are going without meals, and we can see it all over, animals dying, and it is the cause of conflict between the, the, the pastoral nomads 
and yet you you give sentiments to the effect that whoever is trying to 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 enlighten others and to lead a group of of, of youth to protest against their cost of living you think that is just a cloud chaser this is exposing william ruto and the fallacy that they care about the hustler nation and i think Millicent Omanga should even apologize to the Hustler Nation. I don't know what you think, but that is my take.